So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our interview series. My name is Katerina, and I'm a PhD student in transportation engineering, and I'm also a member of Human Student Chapter of Informs. And today we are happy to have Dr. Bursu Parsik with us. She's an associate professor in Ozegim University in Istanbul, Turkey with a PhD in industrial engineering and her expertise is disaster relief and management. So welcome. Yeah, thank you. So starting with our first question, what inspired you in the first place to work in disaster management? Yeah, uh, I had an interest in supply chain management and logistics when I was mm -hmm. doing my master's in industrial engineering in Turkey. Then I got accepted to the PhD program of University of Washington and came to United States and met with my advisor first time, Benita Biman, and she introduced me to this new field. Uh, and we did some interviews together with practitioners. I read a lot about it to understand the humanitarian environment, and uh, it was interesting. And I started working on that like that so mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so then going to more specialized questions what are the challenges in formulating an optimization model when you try to do it inclusive on human factors in that area yeah I, I think uh, including human factor into decision making is challenging for any field in general mm -hmm. uh, but uh, if you find a way uh, to translate the effect of human factor into some measurable factor, like mm -hmm. costs, for example, uh, it, is, it becomes easier. So quantifying and measuring the impact of human factor is difficult, I think. But in disaster relief, um, it is not very easy to are not possible to translate things into costs like yes. human factors. So you need to find other ways to measure, quantify, measure and model human factors. I think we need uh, more studies that looks into the behaviors of people and beneficiaries mm -hmm. after the disasters and which could help us to model their behavior better. Yeah, it is challenging, but yeah, you need to just explore the ways to do it. Mm -hmm. okay. And then, according to your experience, what are some of the challenges that can reduce the efficiency of emergency response operations? Uh, there can be many. It's a broad, it's <laughs> so, a broad question. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I must I mention must that. <laughs> I mean, efficiency is not the most important concern when you work in a humanitarian environment. So there are other objectives that can be more important than efficiency in the first mm -hmm. place. But um, since the resources are scarce, like funding resources, you need to mm -hmm. also use them efficiently. Okay. So I think uncertain environment and constantly changing environment, that chaotic environment makes planning difficult mm -hmm. in general, which is a factor to reduce efficiency. And also coordination is difficult in the field, so you have too many actors working together in the same field, and mm -hmm. if you fail to coordinate, there would be duplication of effort and there would be inefficiencies, but it is a challenge to do that because of the characteristics of the environment. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Can they also be like communication issues? Wait. Yes, I mean the information and communication, I mean th that's part of the uncertainty. So mm -hmm. since you don't have sometimes technology or you don't have that environment to collect information, to reach information, to reach accurate information. So it is, again, like that it affects your planning. Mm -hmm. So if you cannot develop plans, so it is uh, difficult to reach an efficiency as mm -hmm. well. So there are many factors, like transportation infrastructure may be broken, uh, communication may not be possible. There are many actors in the field. You, you don't know what is going on in the region. Mm -hmm. So it is an environment like and for each setting it can be different the necessity yes. of these uh, the needs and the environment can be very different so 
There can be many factors. It would depend on the setting. Uh -huh. But you're happy with the challenges, right? <laughs> yeah, those challenges give you uh, interesting problems, I think. Uh -huh. Like when you yeah. explore these challenges, you find a way to, you try to find a way to incorporate them into the decisions uh, and your models, and then you come up with new models and formulations, uh -huh. new problems that necess that uh, needs different methodologies. So it, so it's like the research projects are. <laughs>